Good afternoon, everyone. The first item of business is Scottish Parliament corporate body questions. We have three questions this afternoon. Question number one, Mary Fee. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Parliamentary corporate body what information it collects on the use of the Parliament creche and whether there has been any analysis of that use. Kezia Dugdale. Thank you, President Officer. Well, here I am. I've spent long enough trying to get this seat. Uh, and here I am responding on behalf of the corporate body. Can I thank Mary Fee for her question and indeed the fact that she's raised it on International Women's Day and wish uh, all the women in the chamber well uh, with their cause. Of course, the Scottish Parliament creche is considered to be an important part of our vision as a parliament to be open and accessible. And it's primarily to provide childcare for visitors to the building. The creche is also, however, available on an ad hoc basis to members and staff. So we do closely monitor the creche's use and the information collected includes the time when the child arrives and leaves, the nature of the visit to the parliament, whether the parent is here to give evidence to a committee, to visit a chamber business or some other type of activity. We also collect the age of the child in terms of whether they are under or over the age of two. So the information that we collect is reviewed regularly uh, and the average length of stay uh, is also regulated as is um, all the reasons to understand why people use the creche in the first place and I hope that's helpful to the member. Mary Fee. Can I thank the member for that very helpful and full answer. Um, given the growing pressure on working families and the rising cost of childcare and the size of the parliament staff, what consideration has the parliament given to expanding the creche service into a nursery that could both serve the needs of visitors to the parliament and the childcare challenges that its members and staff face? Yeah, I thank uh, Mary Fee for that follow-up. The, the Parliament is, of course, alive to its responsibilities to be a decent employer, uh, operating a flexible working environment, particularly around the issues of gender equality, which are so much on our minds uh, today. This issue has been looked at on a number of occasions by previous corporate body memberships. And each have always agreed that the creche is primarily a facility for visitors to the parliament. Um, that said, it is managed in such a way where it can be used by members and their staff on an ad hoc basis in an appropriate manner. Of course, they pay in a way that visitors to the parliament um, do not. We have looked in the past at what it would take to have a nursery or a facility on the site. And I'm sure Mary Fee is more than well aware that that would require different ratios around staff. It would also require some physical changes to the building because of the requirements around having outdoor space uh, for the running uh, of a nursery. And it would also have to be increased level of um, structured learning and development, which is the main difference between nursery provision and creche, which is primarily a childcare facility. So we're constantly uh, looking at these issues. If I can just end, President Officer, by saying that uh, the majority of the people who use the creche are visitors. It's about 85%, with 15% of the people currently accessing it being members and their staff. But we're obviously alive to these issues and we'll continue, continue to monitor it closely. Question number two, Monica Lennon. <clears throat> Thank you. To ask the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body whether it plans to make sanitary products freely available in the Parliament for staff and visitors. Kezia Dugdale. Thank you, President Officer. I can commend Monica Lennon for her work in this area and recognise that today is the day where she's actually uh, published the results of the first stage of her own consultation uh, on this issue. The Parliament is committed to providing a welcoming and inclusive environment where everyone has the right to be treated with respect and dignity, including women who are experiencing menstruation or the menopause in the workplace and beyond it. We are aware of the excellent work already being carried out by the Parliament's Women's Network, and they recently launched an initiative providing honesty boxes within the Parliament's toilets stocked with three sanitary products which have proven to be very popular, as the member will be aware. But that also relies on the goodwill of staff and other users of the building to replace those products. So whilst the SPCB recognises the success of this initiative, the Women's Network is now making recommendations to the Parliament's Diversity and Inclusion Board about the future provision of this service. And we're going to wait to see the outcome of that process from the, the Women's Network before the SPCB revisits this and takes any further decisions about the project's future. Monica Lennon. Thank you, and I thank Keza Dugdale for that response, because the issue of period poverty and access to sanitary products has already been brought up many times in this chamber. And um, as Keza Dugdale says, today I lodged my final bill proposal, which would establish a legal right of access to sanitary products for everyone across Scotland. The Scottish Parliament Women's Network have done an excellent job on improving access to sanitary products for parliamentary staff with the launch of the, the Honesty Box scheme last year. Now, the corporate body has recently responded well to other public campaigns, such as reducing the, the use of plastic straws. Um, 
does the member agree that the parliament or the corporate body also has an obligation to demonstrate leadership on access to sanitary products and as well as welcoming the, the honesty box scheme can the corporate body advise um, if work has been carried out to cost um, the provision of sanitary products because there's clearly a need in this parliament to meet the needs of staff who menstruate or experience the menopause. Kezia Dugdale. Again, I thank Monica Lennon for that follow-up. And I think it's fair to say that we are examining this issue really closely and we are studying uh, what might happen next, but we don't want to preempt any uh, recommendations that come forward from the Women's Network. But specifically about our point on cost, we have looked at the cost uh, to establish the boxes around the building cost at uh, £550 initially and we've worked out the annual cost of such a service would be around £2,400. So these costs are, are, are well within the feasibility of extending this and for the Parliament uh, being the main provider of this service. But again, this is a decision which we'll take at a further point once we've done closer work and further consultation with the Women's Network and I'm sure the member would respect that that's the right and proper way to go about it. Question number three, John Finney. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body what discussions it's had with the Fund Trustees regarding updating the Scottish Parliamentary Pension Scheme's investment strategy and statement of investment principles. Excuse me, and how it will ensure that the scheme's members are consulted about this. Sandra White. Thank you very much, President Officer. Can I thank John Finney for his question and uh, do note his tenacity on this particular subject. Uh, the Scottish Parliament corporate body discussed the matter of engaging with the fund trustees about the scheme's investment strategy at its latest meeting on February the 22nd. It was agreed that a series of meetings involving the SPCB and the fund trustees should be arranged commencing in March to discuss and exchange views on the scheme investment strategy. It is standard practice for the fund trustees to review the scheme statement of investment principles at least every three years and update the SPCB about the revised statement. And under Schedule 1, Part B, Rule 5 of the Scottish Parliament Pensions Act 2009, the fund trustees are responsible for the governance, management and administration of the scheme and for the management of the scheme's assets, including decisions around setting the scheme's investment strategy. John Finney. Thank you. I, I thank the member for that, that detailed response. And, and of course, a number of people have had a long-standing interest on, on this issue. And I think it's important to say that we are in charge of the strategy, not the people we engage to operate the fund. This is something has been given the impression in the past. I wonder if the, 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 the member is aware of uh, public research, which I'm happy to, to share, that 72% of people think our MSP pension fund should not be able to invest in companies involved in arms manufacture, fossil fuel extraction and tobacco. And indeed, the UK government last December said, and I quote, government, the, the, that government, UK government supports the view that trustees should consider members' ethical and other concerns and may respond by acting on them where they have good reason to think members share the concern and it does not have a significant financial uh, uh, detriment. The best way for trustees to know what the fund's members' ethical concerns are would be to consult them. Uh, and this would only involve consultation with uh, uh, current and previous MSP. So it's not a massive group of people, nor a massive expense. Given the fact that the Pension Fund's investment strategy statement principles uh, should or, or, as we've heard, is under three-yearly review, <coughs> will the SPCB write to the pension trustees to support a consultation on potential divestment from arms manufacture, fossil fuel extraction and tobacco, please? Sandra White. I thank John Finney for, for that further supplementary and certainly would be happy to have a look at uh, you know, any work that has absolutely been done. As I said in the previous answer, we are meeting with the fund trustees and certainly I can only speak on behalf of the SPCB. I'm sure that will be part and parcel of the discussions that we may have regarding if it is a consultation. But I would point the member to the fact that he is aware that the trustees are represented from all political parties, including uh, Mr Finney's own party. And it's not for me to suggest who you may wish to speak to, but perhaps Mr Finney or anyone else who feels as strongly as that could speak to their representatives from their political party, which is on the trustees board. But I'd be happy to take forward anything that you, you bring to myself in regards to further information. Thank you. Supplementary to Jamie Halcrow Johnson. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And will the corporate body seek clarity from the fund trustees that the, invest, uh, the existing investment strategy is consistent with market standards? Sandra White. Uh, thank you very much for, for that question. And I know that there is an interest in the particular uh, area and the council area also. And certainly we can take that forward at the next meeting with the SPCB along with the trustees as well. Thank you. That concludes questions to the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body. 
and we'll move on to the next item of business. I'll give a couple of moments for people to change round. <laughs>